Professional titles are also known as professional designation and are used to indicate to the public that this individual has a high level of skill and expertise within their given field. Professional designations are granted to individuals who meet the high standards set by professional bodies. A professional body is a body of practitioners who are qualified experts in connection with their particular occupation. An example of this is a professional title of educator, a qualification of Bachelor of Education, professional body, South African Council for Educators. A person with a degree in education will be accredited by the South African Council for Educators as an educator if the SACE finds that their standard has been met. Practitioners are accredited by these professional bodies who ensure that holders of professional designations are conducting themselves according to their high standards. Professional designations are not equivalent to academic qualifications. They only attest to the individual's expertise and skill. For example, you are applying for a job as an interior decorator. There are a number of equally talented people also applying for the same position. However, you have been accredited by the, by the African Institute of Interior Design Professions and therefore carry the professional title of interior decorator. This accreditation by a professional body informs the interviewer that you have a very high level of expertise that meets the standards of the, of the professional body. As such, you are deemed to be highly qualified and are hired. Unlike professions such as nursing, where professional designations are highly respected and sometimes required, professional designations do not hold much weight in the art world. Being an artist does not require a license, an official education or a degree. Instead, one's artistic works vouch for an artist's skill and expertise. Musicians, fine artists, digital artists and other types of artists make a name for themselves through the quality and creativity of their creations. For example, there is a position open at a game development company. You and another artist are both applying. You have received accreditation as a digital artist and your competitor has not. However, they have been working in the industry for many years and have worked on many different de development projects. Despite your accreditation by a professional body, the other person is chosen as the art test to their skill. However, there are certain benefits to developing a system of accreditation for artists, specifically visual artists. Countries such as America have begun to push for the development of artists as a professional title. Within today's society, where artists wish to make an artist standalone career, the need for an accreditation system through a professional body is increasing. It has been proposed that a professional title for artists will help artists be taken more seriously by mainstream society, which will in turn decrease the exploitation of artists within the business sector. Art as a career will gain credibility amongst other professions. Furthermore, regulation of artistic standard practices and education by a professional body will insist in building a connection of connected community of artists based on self-improvement and peer review. For example, an ice cream shop hires you to paint a mural on their wall. You are highly skilled and are hired based on your sketches. The ice cream shop owners do not see art as a real and respectable profession and decide to pay you below minimum wage. You are exploited because they do not respect you despite having spent many hours creating a masterpiece. Unfortunately, South Africa does not have a professional body for accreditation as an artist. However, there is now an International Institute for Artist Accreditation, which grants artists accreditation to those who fulfill the necessary criteria. This can be done online through artistaccreditation.com. There is also a certification for digital artists found at certifieddigitalartist.com. It is important to note, however, that although certification and accreditation does have some advantages, it is not necessary to become a successful artist in the industry. Although it is not common practice in South Africa, trademarking your artist's name could have many benefits for an artist. A trademark is described as a badge of origin. It serves as an indicator of which brand or product is attributed to and is generally distinct enough that the public can easily recognize the trademark as a household brand. 
For example, Apple has become a household brand as many people use their electronic products, such as the iPhone and the iPad. The most notable indicator that this is an Apple product is the iconic logo of an apple with a bite taken out of it. Registering a trademark is relatively cost-effective. Although there are registration fees involved, the benefits far outweigh the costs. The major benefit of a trademark is keeping other people from profiting off of or stealing your trademark. If you own the trademark, then you have sole control of the right to issue legal proceedings if somebody attempts to, trade, to use your trademark without permission. An instance of this is when the now internationally known band Westlife was forced to change its name from Westside as there was already a band by that name at the time. Additionally, you will be able to license your trademark at a price to other people. For example, a painter by the name of Paintbrush X has become a household name, and a new television series wishes to have a t-shirt that says Paintbrush X as a prop within their show. Paintbrush X may license his trademark to the directors, allowing them to show his name printed on a t-shirt on screen for a period of time in exchange for a licensing fee. Trademarks are registered by way of the Trademarks Act and you will have to register your trademark within a specific trademark class. These classes have been compiled by way of the International NICE classification system. There are currently 45 available classes as indicated on the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission website. For example, class 41 includes trademarks regarding entertainment, education and cultural activities. The process of trademarking an artist's name is fairly simple. Firstly, in order to register an artist's name for trademarking, the name cannot already be registered as an artist's name. You can check this easily on the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission online site, where they have a search system. Once you have established your desired name, and it has not already been registered as an artist's name, then the next step is to, to register said name as a trademark. Section 12 of the Trademarks Act allows for the trademarking of a person's name or part of the name as long as the person consents. For example, you want to register your band's name, The Beatles. However, after searching on the CIPC online site, you discover that The Beatles has already been registered. So, you decide to change the name to The Beatles, spelled B-E-A-T-E-L-S, which is based on your surname, Beatle, B-E-A-T-L-E. -E. Your trademark needs to be registered with the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission in order to be recognized legally. After your application is submitted to the Trademarks Registry, you will receive an application number. Around 10 months later, the Registrar of the Trademarks, Trademarks Registry will assess the application. After checking the requirements, the Registrar will either accept or decline the application. Once the application is accepted, it is published or advertised within the South African Patent Journal for three months. This is to allow for individuals to lodge an opposition to the trademark for a valid reason. For example, your application for the trademarking of the Beatles, B-E-A-T-E-L-S, is published. The band, the Beatles, decides to contest this as they feel the name is too similar to theirs. However, the opposition is rejected as the similarity is not obvious enough. Finally, if there has been no opposition for three months, then the trademark has been officially registered. An even simpler way of registering a trademark is through the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission online site. After making an account on the website, follow the prompts and instructions provided to lodge an application for the registering of a trademark. You will have the option to choose the type of trademark as well as to enter in your artist's name or desired symbol. All of the payments can also be done online at iponline.cipc.co.za.
Rules of Trademarking As stated previously, a trademark is a badge of origin. It can be a logo, slogan, name, or any other distinctive indication of a brand associated with a particular product or service. Once the trademark has been registered, it now becomes the property of the owner who has sole control over it. Once registered, a trademark is protected forever, provided that it is renewed every 10 years from the date of application. It is important to note that your registered trademark is specific to your territory. Essentially, the country in which your trademark is registered is the only country where your trademark is recognized and protected. You would need to specifically register your trademark again in the new territory. For example, John is a famous artist by the name of Johnny X. His artist name's trademark is registered in South Africa and therefore will only be protected within South Africa. If he wishes to go international, then he will have to register his trademark individually in each country. There are other ways of protecting your name or brand as an artist aside from the Trademark Act. For example, there is the common law concept of passing off, which can be utilised in specific situations to protect your unregistered name. A necessary element is that you have to have made a name for yourself within your trade and are recognisable by others within the scope of your trade. Thereafter, if another person within your trade passes off their product as yours, then you may be legally protected from this infringement. The two requirements for this protection are 1. You must prove that your signifier, brand, symbol, etc. can be attributed to you and your identity. And two, that, that it is highly likely that the public will confuse your brand or symbol with that of the infringer. If these requirements are met, then your name brand is protected. The infringer can face legal consequences for their actions. For example, there is a sculptor named Red who has recently become famous in her city for her sculptures that have all been painted with a highly specific pattern unique to her. Since she has become so popular, another artist wishes to profit off her success. He begins making his own sculptures and deliberately learns to mimic her patterns to sell his sculptures under her name. Red's patterns are so distinctive, therefore people within her community begin to believe that the copycat sculptures are hers. Red has not trademarked her artist's name nor her distinctive patterns and therefore cannot be, cannot be protected by the Trademarks Act. However, her situation meets the requirements for the common law protection of passing off. Thus, she now has legal remedies at her disposal. Although trademarking is still the best way to protect your name and work from being stolen, it is not the only form of protection. The common law protection called passing off can protect you if you can meet a number of requirements that prove that someone was passing off their work as yours.